Welcome to War Thunder Spectrum. Today I gathered players from our Discord server to ask some controversial questions about War Thunder and get their opinions. In this video, we're going to see if all War Thunder players think the same. Let's introduce our contestants. My name is Jan, and I have played War Thunder since uh, June 2017. I um, pretty much exclusively almost play most of my matches in ground realistic battles. This all is right. just my preferred mode. I'm Fuel. I've been playing this game since May, no, April of 2015. Uh, how, much, what else how, how much money have you spent on premiums? Probably about $3,000. Oh um, pay to win. <laughs> but, you know, I play Japan and America mostly on ground RB. I am Staffelcap. I want to say I started playing back during 2017, 2018, originally on PS4 when it came out. For the most part, started off playing ground AB, air AB, then switched over to ground, and then switched over to RB. And usually, I play sim occasionally, but for the most part, it's ground RB. Hi, I'm Bagpiper. Uh, I started originally started playing back in summer of 2018. Took a break, then got back into playing it on December 2020 on PS4. War Thunder is fun. Three. Two, one, go. It's a very good feeling to shoot the enemy and make him explode. And usually the game is very enjoyable. It, of course, has its bad moments. But most of the moments are relatively good, especially if you have friends along, which just makes the whole thing more enjoyable, even if you do get your head kicked in by the enemy. You know, I agree, but I think it's the most fun you can ever have in a video game. There's so much stuff you can do, and honestly, when you get cast by G91, it doesn't really matter. It's a video <laughs> game. Just enjoy it. I would say this gun has its moments, definitely. Just the further you go along into it, the more tedious, monotonous, and just downright predatory the game seems to get in instances, with frequent up tiers that seem relatively unfair when you're at the lower tier. For example, you get a 6-3 and a 7-3 match. And while there are a lot of fun things about it, it's just there's also a lot that seems like there could be a lot more thought put into it with some with just incredible BR compression, just more things being added, mostly as premiums that you have to pay for. So I agree with the statement because the game can be fun most of the times, especially so with friends, but it does have its occasional match every now and then where it's just god awful and you just hate yourself for it and wonder why you play the game. You need to pay money to progress at a reasonable rate. Three, two, one, go. At first, it seems ridiculous as to why people would pay money but the longer you grind the game you the more you understand that it's taking a really long time and many people for instance like me when i started working just had less and less time for war thunder and um it's just that without you spending a large amount of time in war thunder it takes quite a bit of time to actually grind for all the things mm -hmm. especially when some economy changes are applied that make, let's say, your favorite vehicle unfavorable anymore because it just doesn't earn the same amount of money. It generally speeds everything up and makes you not have to worry about your funds as much. So I heavily dis or heavily agree with this. I mean, War Thunder is basically a demo if you play for free. You're not going to get anywhere. You're going to be stuck in rank 2. You have to pay money. It's just a thing. It's just War Thunder and it's, it's habits. I don't know. I would like to say that I mostly strongly agree if you're only considering you don't have anything other to do aside from playing War Thunder, you can get decently far into it, as I have for a bit, since when I was mostly playing, I was in school, and whenever I, whenever I get off, that's what I would do. Though, now, when you include, you know, having an actual life, like when you have work, you have other stuff to go to, you physically will not have the time to deal with the incredibly high uh, RP cost, the SL cost for newer, higher tier tanks, you can get up to rank 3 reasonably fast, just past that, and you're going to be slogging it out for months to years on end just to get to even the start of Cold War era tanks. So, 
I'm in the neutral area, but it's a mix of both, actually. So I'm neutral about it because, like Staffel says, it depends how much free time you have in your life and if you even want to spend money at all. Because in my case, I always try to not spend money in games. But War Thunder has been one of those games where I'm always on the fence just because of how much of an unnecessary grind it is. But it also is capable of getting to the end without having to spend a dime. So that's why I'm neutral about this. Arcade is a good game mode. Three, two, one, go. Hey, arcade is a very good mode for beginners to learn the basics of War Thunder and to grind the tedious events, like 50 kills. Uh, but it's not a mode I would recommend for most people. Obviously, people have different preferences, and there are people who play arcade a lot because they find it enjoyable. It's just my personal opinion that it's not really, not really the best mode. Like I wouldn't play it if I didn't have to sometimes. Um, but it's not bad. It's not a bad mode. It just has something of its own, like being more hectic usually. I'll be honest. I'm not the biggest fan of arcade. I think it, the game mode is just the BRs are trash. It's much worse than RB and Sim. Uh, the gameplay, to me, is very boring. I'm going to stay neutral, though, because, like Jan said, it is useful for some things like events if you want to just finish it quickly, but other than that, other than that, the gameplay is just not fun. It is not, not what I like. I would say Arcade is a mostly good game mode for War Thunder, specifically if you're trying to cater to World of Tank fans who were burnt out from World of Tanks and you're trying to draw them over, because it has a more arcade feel, hence the name to it, specifically with movement, as you can tell by my mouse being able to move incredibly fast, as well as just increased SL and RP gain to some extent compared to RB and Sim, for when you're talking about beginners, anyway. Though I would say the higher ranks you go, it does get a little odd, especially when you come to like a tank, for example, as the Ferdinand, which, if I'm not mistaken, sits at 7.0 or 7.3 in arcade, which completely nullifies basically all the benefits the tank offers realistically. Like an RB, its frontal armor is incredible against its average BR range, but when you're fighting. For example, like tanks with heat FS or all that, then it's kind of just a big, slow paperweight with no armor. So I agree with this statement because from experience, it's an amazing introduction for new players. You don't get thrown into a serious mode right off the bat. Um, the increased mobility allows for some really stupid moments because you can't see me right now. But for vehicles like the Puma, being able to go over a hill and just launching yourself halfway across the map, it's amazing. Or in Air Arcade, like, you can just engage in dogfights without worrying about your plane being gone. And the mobility in Air Arcades increases as well, so it just makes for a stupid but fun time. Helicopters were a good addition to the game. Three, two, one, go. Right, I find helicopters to be... A decently good addition to War Thunder, as helicopters and tanks do partake in, you know, combined arms combat. Mm, I just find the implementation to be quite lacking. So, for instance, some countries still don't have helicopters, but soon will be fixed, at least for China. Um, and I find that some helicopters are just blatantly overpowered compared to other countries' helicopters. And that the helicopter grind is kind of long. Like, it combines the experience, like the research points you need for at least three normal planes for first stage helicopters, making them incredibly expensive per vehicle. All right, so I kind of agree with Jed. The implementation has been kind of awful. I honestly think they need their own mode, like a PVE, a proper PVE mode to play, not in ground battles. I mean, it's just cancer, K-52s, K-50s. I mean, yes, you can counter it with planes in AA, like everyone else says, but it's just not fun. On paper, I can see 
how they would have been a good implementation, but considering the fact that they were solely designed to kill tanks, and that's what War Thunder has most drastically shifted to, is tank combat, the addition of what's specifically meant to be the ultimate tank killer has been so botched that, especially when you consider the fact that helicopters can spawn in first with especially American ones, can spawn in with incredibly high-explosive-filled unguided missiles. And when you're trying to grind out a mouse, you will frequently barely get out of spawn just to be killed by a first-spawn helicopter who just missile-spans you to death. It happens frequently in other tanks that I've taken at 7-7 and above, where I just get shot from across the map by a helicopter who's barely out of the heli-spawn. Just they're Honestly, the best way to really improve helicopters is to outright remove them or make them incapable of playing in typical ground RB. Okay, so I'm neutral with this statement because, from experience, I've never had to deal with helicopters in a game yet, so I can't really comment on something I haven't experienced. But from what I've heard, people generally complain about it, so can't make a comment on this. Close air support is a good thing in tank battles. Three, two... One, go. Close air support to be a very good thing in some cases. Um, it is definitely like a huge help to kill heavily armored tanks. For instance, Staffel's mouse. Uh, if he, let's say, gets into a down tier and there aren't any heat lobbers around. Um, but the implementation of CAS is almost like helicopters, kind of flawed. I just find that um, Cass and War Thunder should actually be limited in numbers. Because there isn't anything less fun than having, let's say, five uh, AM2s. When you have like five of those, or even just three of those, just absolutely bomb the shit out of your team. It just isn't fun anymore. Or let's say you have a uh, you know, 8.7 BR German plane that Fuel might know very well and might hate it very well, uh, just launching its fair and balanced AGMs and everything. There are obviously some examples of them being super powerful, for instance, premium aircraft like the Donny 335. Other cases, other countries have almost no CAS. Uh, but generally, CAS is kind of... It's, it's mixed feelings, but definitely towards the good side, at least if you're, they are on the Euro team and aren't team killing. I mean, you can't stop planes with historical payloads to, you know, have fun in, with CAS and kill everybody. Um, but gameplay aside, War Thunder... Tanks is kind of built around the combined arms uh, aspect, and if you just remove that, I don't think the audience of this game uh, will get any better, or I think it'll just get worse. And uh, yeah, I mean, G91s are annoying, but I'd rather have G91s than no G91s. That even mm -hmm. makes any sense. I want to say I'm pretty conflicted about it, because if you can't tell... I said it in the little uh, team chat, but I've been killed by a Tempest before in a mouse, which was uh, incredibly frustrating because I spent a whole five minutes driving from spawn to just before the front line just to be bombed in the middle of a bunch of friendlies who all survived, which was uh, fun. But I can say there have been plenty of instances in the past where I have had incredible times playing as Kaz, almost single-handedly... Oh? <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta yell at cats. As I was saying, had incredible experiences in CAS where I've had, uh, where I was almost single handedly winning the match for my team, but at the same time had matches where almost immediately right off the bat, our entire team was wiped out by CAS aircraft, which it's unbalanced, but also incredibly balanced when you consider that SBAA are all over the place, such as the German Werbel Win, which is just a nightmare, and the Italian R3, which is just pure cancer. But when you take into consideration a lot of uh, allied cast being incredibly heavy laden with ordnance, such as rockets and bombs, which are very frequent to see, such as the P-47 and the Typhoon, it just really depends. It's a match-by-match -match basis of how it goes for you, really. So, I slightly agree with this statement, because um, it can be very stupid at times, but personally, one way I think to fix it could be increase the spawn points required to use certain planes or loadouts. But it also is that amazing feeling whenever you get your Stuka R2 and successfully pull off a dive bomb and kill one or two enemies. 
and it also makes for some funny uh, moments. Because, for example, I could be in a Stug 3F, bouncing shots left and right, only to be killed by a Kamikaze P-47 who's upset. But apart from that, close air support can be good and bad. It still pays tribute to the original game mode that War Thunder was based off of. Naval is fun. Three, two, one, go. Naval, so far the game mode has had funny moments, but it's generally not very refined game mode. Not saying you can't have fun, it's just that if you, for instance, get uh, into like an up tier, if you aren't just playing coastal ships, it's just a fat chance you will get hit by a battleship from, well, not a battleship, but let's say a cruiser or a heavy cruiser or whatever, and get sniped by that guy from kilometers because his shells for no reason do more damage than yours. And the ranging system in the game is just kind of flawed for our ships. It doesn't work as you want it to properly. The controls are generally weird. Especially the fact that in by holding the button in less than a second, you can just um, you know go from zero to full throttle instead of having it go in stages to take a little bit longer to shift. But you could skip by pressing multiple times the button. And also the implementation of planes into that mode is... I mean, I can't speak for realistic naval. I haven't played that yet. I've only played re like arcade naval so far. But I've found that the implementation of, for instance, planes there is very wonky. Mm -hmm. And the fact that board gunners don't do anything against planes really is also annoying. They just don't hit. They, 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 they don't even hit biplanes properly half the time. Alright, so first of all, it's unbalanced. You have light cruisers playing against battleships. And then l literally like half of my games insist of me spawning in my Helena. And then instantly dying to some random Japanese battleship out of spawn. And like it's it's just it's unplayable. It's I I have no fun in it. It is completely unplayable. Like it has so much potential, but it just got scuffed, man. I must say I'm pretty neutral, but at the same time incredibly conflicted about naval because it seems very half baked, but at the same time something you could enjoy. Just at the same time, it depends on which naval. Because there's coastal naval, and then there's blue water naval. In personal experience, the only time you're ever going to have with blue water naval is if you're already at top tier with some of the high level battleships, or when you're just starting off with some of the reserve ships. And even then, that's only if you don't end up getting up tiered against heavy cruisers, which you can't touch. Coastal, though, from my experience from playing naval when it first released, was fun. It was fun, but after a while it got very monotonous, and at the same time people just started quitting, so basically no matches for a while. But I can say, even relatively recently, I've had, had some fun playing naval Soviet coastal back a while ago, maybe a year or so ago. It's been a while since I've played. But otherwise, when you finally get up to higher tier blue water naval, it's like some 40-something ships all sharing the same BR ranking, which is just atrocious. It's and People like to talk about compression for tanks and aircraft, but then you look at naval, and it's ungodly. I find naval can be fun most of the time, but naval isn't for everyone, but it's still nice. And from my experience, it can be slow-paced at times, depending on what BR and what nation you're doing. And I've always been a laid-back guy, so I enjoy the more slower moments. But it does have its moments where it's just horrible, but overall, I still enjoy Naval. Events like the Operation Summer event and the Battle Pass are too tedious. Three, two, one, go. Just gotta put this in CC and AFK for a minute. Event grinds obviously depends on the events, but I would say they're quite uh, annoying. Of course, the tasks might be easy. However, the issue with those tasks is um, usually your matchmaking will be absolutely horrid as the teams suddenly lose all of their brain cells. Oh, well, the one that they still had, for that matter. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just very uh, annoying in general to grind in events, because even the easiest tasks get uh, 
slowed down to hours worth of grinding due to the teams being absolute ass and you just having to put yourself on your own. And don't even get me started on crafting events, which are just a way for Gaijin to earn excessive amounts of money. I, I would say events are a great thing in-game, should definitely stay. But I would also want to say that they should have to change something. So one of them being don't give away production vehicles in events, only prototypes. And second of them being make it so that let's say I work nine hours a day and only have like four hours of PC time. So even I could, for instance, grind that easily, not just some try hard. All right. So I normally I'm staying neutral because I don't really grind events that much. I kind of it's kind of just either I finish the events or finish the tasks like just by playing the game normally. Uh, I'll stay neutral. I mean, I don't really have that big of an opinion. That the tasks are easy, uh, like Jan said. The crafting events, uh, I haven't really participated in any of them, so I don't really have that much to say. But they seem pretty hard. But yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just buy the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say outright that I despise the events more often than not. There's occasionally there's like events where there's more often than not the events offer me vehicles that. I have absolutely no interest in are for nations and are at BRs that I have no interest in or are just too incredibly difficult to even remotely wish to grind for such a not to mention that the events themselves, no matter what's available for them, brings out some of the sweatiest tryhards, even what were some of the most casual matches to where you can hardly enjoy the already frustrating game to begin with. So I agree with this because, like, people like me, a young student, not everyone has the time to do, let's say, 50 ground or B battles in the span of two days just to unlock a really horrible vehicle. Like, I would like to unlock some of these vehicles, but most people just don't have the time. It's one of those things where it's nice if you have the time, but if you don't, you're in a tight situation. The game is dying. Three, two, one, go. I would say the game is slowly descending. Uh, obviously sped up very much at some times, especially due to questionable decisions, like BR changes that just don't make sense. Um, it isn't gonna die like in let's say half a year's time but it is going towards that spot because more and more people are just um fed up with how the game is and how the devs are not properly responding to the community or at least ignoring a large portion of, com of the community and only um implementing the changes that their favorite piece of audience has so in this instance let's say german tanks getting down tiered a lot even though they shouldn't be or some tanks have um, incredibly high repair costs because it's just the way it is. And um, also some of the admins suppressing uh, free opinions. And let's say implementation of tanks for small tech trees is just also horrid. So that's all kind of driving people away from the game. Uh, I know this is getting a bit long, but basically just it's not dying too fast, but it is definitely dying. It's going to take a while though for it to be fully dead. The game is, I, in my opinion, is not dying. Wait, There's agree? so much content Wait, yeah. that they they could add and would add more player base. I think there's so much potential in terms of gameplay. Not even just content, but just gameplay. Like, they can add new game modes. They can add all this new stuff that'll keep the game alive. The game's not going to die anytime soon. It has no competition. No one's going to make a better game than War Thunder. It's just impossible. War Thunder has been around for too long, and there's so many models in this game. Like... Even if they run out of content, I think this game will be still alive. I must say that there is a bit from personal experience as well as uh, from anecdotes from other content creators. I have seen that the only people who typically stay around playing War Thunder are the people who either don't know any better and are just starting off before they get to like the serious brick wall that is after rank 3 tanks. Or people who have been playing for literal years, like a lot of the content creators. As well as people 
in personal experience, I've been entirely unable to include any of my friends, uh, get my friends to actually play for any more than a, maybe a few hours here and there. Like, I've tried getting friends to play. We play a few battles here and there, and then they stop playing it after that because they aren't really into it. That, and I've heard a few anecdotes from another user, like the one that comes to my most, for some reason, is Spookstrom, where he claimed to have tried getting a few friends to play, and they couldn't get into it. It's just, at first, it's very enticing, especially when compared to World of Tanks, if you're not wanting that arcade feel. I would say Armored Warfare, but God, it's dead. And uh, there's, like nothing else comparatively equal to it besides ghpc and from what i can tell it still isn't finished yeah there's not much really comparatively to it but even then it's still scary with how have a lot of monetary practices have been going how brs are being switched up so frequently being pushed and pulled away from where they originally were that there's nothing much that could be changed at this point and is worth understanding seems to be kind of in a death spiral. I slightly disagree with this. The game's likely still going just because there's nothing else close to it, which is finished yet, like Staffel said. But the horrible decisions that Gaijin makes every now and then does not help the game's lifespan whatsoever. So it seems like that to some people. But the frequent if it wasn't for the frequent updates, the game would have been dying at a more faster pace. And that concludes the War Thunder Spectrum. If you'd like a part 2, leave some statements in the comments below for other participants to share their opinions on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the- oh, wait a second. Looks like we have one more question to go. The SK Dojo YouTube channel is good. That's, this is so gonna look rehearsed. Do, do. Banana bus. Oh yeah, boy. Banana bus. Fuel, let's squeeze him, let's squeeze him, fuel, let's squeeze him, no. come on. Let me go. That's what she said. <laughs> do, do. Banana bus. <laughs> oh, shit. Banana bus. <laughs> Let me go, you heathens. Oh, Kill him. Oh, oh, no. Boy, no. boy the minority. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's not high. It's going to be the outro. Damn. Oh, God, what's happening? It's going to be the outro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He killed him. <laughs> Fuel just hit the back of me as fast as you can, okay? Yo, uh, that that sounds really you. wrong. <laughs> I mean, like you love him. I was into BBW. Jesus fuck. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in here. Clap Jack like, thickness and brace Kuma. Nice drift, bro. Could you imagine if the mouse drifting. um here? Yeah. Machine guns yeah. back then, like at least from the inside perspective. Kind of sound like an old doorbell, but inside of a tank, it sounds way closer than that.